In this episode of Financial Model Detective, I want to talk to you about the role of a financial modeler in a project finance transaction. So this is another chit chat video. I'm not going to do any Excel work. It's just, you know, a discussion between you and me on the role of a financial modeler. And I think that that's an important question to consider if you are hiring a financial modeler or if you are taking the role of a financial modeler in a transaction. And that's the question that I usually ask people when I meet them during a meeting, people who are involved in a project finance deal. That's the question that I always ask. So how do you see the role of a financial modeler or how do you handle the, war, uh, the role of a financial modeler in your transaction? And so far, here are the answers that I have received. So one is that we hire short-term consultants on project by project basis. Some people, they hire long-term consultants that accompany them throughout the, the project. And other kind of style is to have uh, financial modeling capabilities in-house within their company and organization. And some people also, they have like, they, they work with financial modeling companies, the external uh, firms that do the financial modeling for them. So if you look at all these, you know, four types that I told you, the difference, the main difference between them is the extent you know that the financial modeler is involved in the transaction. So for example, when you hire, you know, when you uh, work with a financial modeling company to build the model for you, or when you hire a short-term consultant on project by project basis, most of the time, or in some cases, uh, the way it happens is that you hire the company, you hire the financial modeler, and you tell them exactly what you need to do up front, okay? So you tell them that, like, okay, I have a solo project, I'm going to go and discuss a tariff, and then once the tariff is set, I'm going to go and use the financial model to negotiate my loan terms, you know, and this is all the requirements that, you know, under the uh, loan agreement for my financial close, I need to submit a financial model. So you're going to go and hire the consultant or the financial modeling company to do the model for you upfront. Okay. So in these cases, my own personal experience, what happens is that uh, there is a disconnect between the end user and the financial modeler. Okay. Because upfront, you hire a financial modeler to do the model for you. Then you take that model and you use it throughout the negotiation. Okay. So what happens is that that disconnects, you know, so the financial modeler is in most of these cases is not with you throughout the process okay so if you don't have in-house capabilities to handle the model to adopt the model to maintain the model then that's a problem that i have seen in many deals just recently you know i received a financial model that i reviewed the model was had many options you know it was like had too many options that was not necessary for that deal like right? refinancing was not being considered there were like lots of calculations related to refinancing and so many other you know accounting you know systems that were not even you know uh, necessary for that project so um, I reviewed the model of course for me it was a good exercise because I love you know receiving models with a lot of options so you can learn from this type of model a lot but when it came to that project it was not really necessary so the first thing that I asked was I asked you know the company if they can just update the model do not touch anything just update the model and give me you know the updated model with the new EPC and O&M price and I was very surprised to get the answer that, you know, they told me you know, exactly these are the words that um, we cannot update the model because we hired a consultant to do the model for us and we paid a high fee. However, we cannot handle it in house. So that's, you know, very sad because uh, that's not how, you know, these things needs to be handled. You know, there are all these problems that you pay a fee for a tool that you cannot use it later on in your project. Uh, the other thing is that when you hire, you know, short term consultants, you know, to do the projects for you, then, you know, once the, the consultant is gone, 
then you know you're left with the tool as i said you need to maintain it and also for your next deal if you again you don't have the time or the skills to do the model for the next deal you need to most probably hire another consultant with another way of thinking with another way of doing things so you will end up with another model template so you will accumulate all these different model templates and uh, for different projects and that's not really something that i think is productive because once you have uh, one consulting firm, one financial modeler involved across all your deals, first of all, you're going to build up expertise, you know, within your company. So that financial modeling company, that financial modeler will learn, you know, throughout, you know, different projects and throughout different processes, will learn how things work as well, can even do databases for you for benchmarking based on the previous project. So there are a lot of benefits of kind of building that expertise within your company or just working with one single firm across all your transactions, okay? So that's what I wanted to cover today. Uh, I have a blog post that I also talk about other stuff as well, the difference between the what I call a financial modeler as a spreadsheet engineer. That's the first case that I said you hire someone to build a model mechanic and then you have the disconnect between the end user, which is you, the one who is negotiating, and the financial model. The second approach that I suggest is to have the financial modeler involved in all the transaction, all the aspects of the transaction, okay, together with you, if you are the investment officer, whatever the managing director, whatever is your position, to always have the financial model with you in all negotiations. So this way you are basically making sure that the model is always up to date with the latest realities of your project. And also, you know, you're building the expertise in-house and also, uh, once you want to send the model you know, to external sources, you make sure that you have a model that is updated and reflects the reality of your project. Okay, so that's it. Now I am done on this one. Let me know what you think. Let me know what is your opinion about this. If you're a financial modeler, how do you see yourself within your organization? Do you see yourself engaged in the discussion? If you're hiring a financial modeler, let me know what you think, you know, is the role of a financial modeler. How much do you engage your financial modeler in your transactions? Okay, so that's it for me and I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you and bye. If you want to learn how to build better financial models, check out my online course on financial model spreadsheet design at courses.phoenixmode.com